would you say like people from the United States were having a much more difficult time getting the GM title compared to like people from Europe? Let's say. Oh, by far, by far. I mean, it wasn't even close. And I want to say that today United States is uh, has an extraordinarily high number of grandmasters, but that was due to immigration. And, you know, it was really, I was elated, seriously. First of all, I myself am an immigrant. But I was elated when people from the Soviet Union came. Leonid Shemkovich, Lev Albert, um, Anatoly Lane. Um, Kaidanov. Uh, Gregory Kaidanov, Alexander Yermolinsky, Alexander Shabalov. These guys brought an extraordinary wealth of knowledge, Roman Jinjiashvili. I mean, and they poured their knowledge into this American pool of chess understanding, and their presence raised our awareness. So I think I became a much, much, much better player. But then if you started looking at all of these grandmasters and grandmaster titles, you wow, we sure, well, we sure attracted a lot. It one, wasn't one of like those players, there were so many homegrown. One of those players, um, I don't think you mentioned his name, but I, I grew up on his book, The Road to Chess Improvement by Yermolinsky. I, I did mention, but yeah. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, and, uh, fantastic. And, and one of my first coaches, not my first coach, but one of my first coaches, Miron Scher, also immigrated and, mm-hmm. and brought over his chess co- coaching skills and coached a lot of the, the young chess players of, of my generation who later became right. grandmasters, guys like Robert Hess, guys like Mark Arnold, like the, this exactly. generation of players. Exactly. And um, yeah, I, I mean, I think it was, it was good for American chess. I, there's yeah. a lot of debate over this, right? Of course. A lot of people who see it a different way, but I right. think it's a or good bitter thing. that they lost a seat to the U.S. championship yeah. or maybe it of, of an Olympic team because, <laughs> you know, uh, the stronger yeah. Soviet grandmaster kind of came in and mm. swooped the place. But I had the absolute opposite. It was like, the stronger, the better. Come on over. Come on over. <laughs> Come on over. Uh, but I, speaking of um, Nikolai, uh, my uh, trainer, uh, uh, from Bulgaria, Nikolai Minev. So he was an international master. And then you look at his credentials. He's like he won, he wins all of these Bulgarian championships. He's number one on the Olympic team. You know, he holds Bodvinik to a draw, the Soviet versus Soviet Union versus Bulgaria match, and he just beats all of these players. It's like, dude, how how could you not get the grandmaster title? You know. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's just extraordinarily how good he was, but he couldn't be a professional chess player in Bulgaria, which supported chess. He was actually a medical doctor, okay? And he eventually, he gave up the practice of medicine to become the editor of the Bulgarian chess magazine because it paid better yeah. <laughs> than being a medical doctor. It was like, Wow, right? So uh, being a professional player today has a completely different meaning than what it was. Uh, I mean, I never, I obviously I was a professional player in the sense that I, I did dedicate myself to playing chess, but I could never afford to be a professional chess player. I literally, you know, was scraping to get money for, say, John Donaldson or Nikolai mm-hmm. to support, to get their support. Because, you know, I won U.S. championships where first prize was $6,000. I'm I'm envious of uh, yeah, the first we're, prize of... Uh, we're incredibly privileged today, of course. Truly, the, the truly. Elite, the top chess players. And, yeah. and even levels a bit below. Right. Because there's always this more and more chess tournaments and opportunities coming in chess. Now, online chess. Right. <clears throat> That's a whole different story. Exactly. That's a huge amount of money right. um, that's being brought into, into chess. 